right, I'll shout at you. So we're here with Bob Fisher at the launch of the AC45. You've been here for how many days, Bob? About four days. And how do you feel, find the AC45? Well, I'm happily staggered. I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. I really didn't. Yeah. And it is. It's just much, much better than I thought it was going to be. When, when did you first start selling multi hulls? Um, we have to get into that. <laughs> and about 1959, I think. So, uh, yeah. Where, where well, did you start? Well, Brightening Sea was a sort of hotbed of uh, multi hull enthusiasts uh, up on that sort of little bit of Essex where um, we just had boat builders, we were small boat sailors, and enthusiasts to go fast. Um, top among them was a guy called John Fisk, who for many years was the uh, chairman of the IYRU, as it was those days, multi hull committee. And John was the first guy who put out a challenge to the Americans for a, a race in boats of 25 feet long with uh, 300 square feet of sail. Um, I remember him explaining it to me back then. Um, we'd just come out of the pub and we were all sitting around. There was him and Rod McAlpin Downey, who designed the really quick boats in those days, Bridge White and myself. And he said, um, we're going to have 24.3 mile courses. It'll be around a triangle and a beat and a run. And he said, just like a little America's Cup. Well, it became the Little America's Cup, and yeah, we all, you know, in those days, we were all part of the development. Rod was majorly doing all the, uh, the work on the hulls, and Reg was building them, and I was rigging them. And it was all fun, um, because we liked travelling fast. So, yeah, I mean, that's how I got into catamaran sailing, and uh, enjoyed it immensely. So when did you first come across the wing sail? Well, I... 19... 1966, we had the part wing, part sail um, with Lady Helmsman. Mm. It was, you know, 50 percent of each. So you had 150 square feet of wing and uh, 150 square feet of blade sail behind. It. But it was largely the wing that drove the boat, mm. and it was sort of a really a trailing flat. It's the sort of second flat, like you see on there. But it was really quite, uh, quite an exciting. Uh, thing. Uh, I looked yesterday when I was uh, up at Walkworth and seeing how they were building the masts up there, the wings up there, and thought, Reg, you'd love to see this, Reg, because <laughs> when we built the main spa for that, it was, it was constructed of expanded polystyrene surrounded by birch ply, and that was the main spa within the, in the whole thing. And you know, and then we had to individually cut all the ribs for the very, because it was tapered both ways. And, it was difficult to make, and it had a curved leech as well, that, mm. that wing, so getting a sail up the luff of that was another problem, but we got around it, yeah. uh, but it was the most exciting time, and boy, did we know the difference between that that rig and the ones we'd had previously. So when you sailed against the soft sail boats in those days, what was the difference? Well, the difference was that you had control. Mm. You had far more control. There was none of this woof of the sail as you used the sheet, you know, the sail would jerk away. Mm. As you dropped down the traveller a bit, you still had, it was very much like a wing. It, mm. It's still strapped down on the leech on the, uh, of the mainsail. Mm. But you just let it down on the traveller and uh, altered the angle a bit. Mm. So it was much, much more like this. Mm. And um, so, yeah, it was, uh, I can understand this technology. And then, of course, we saw the real full on wings coming in, and uh, by that time I had to go and get a proper job. <laughs> so, what's your um, take on the, the factory up at Walkworth, which you went to the other day? I was stunned. I thought it's just wonderful. I, you know, only wish, only wish Ridge was still about so he could go and see it. Because I remember telling him when he opened up Sailcraft in Brightling Sea that the first thing he ought to get is an old boy with a broom. <laughs> you know, clean up around after, because it, you know, it, it's if you've got a clean place, you can make better equipment. Mm. That up there is immaculate. It is just like, I mean, it is cleaner than a hospital. Mm. I mean, some of the hospitals I've been into certainly, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it really is. It's a, it, it's a great place, and you, you'd be hard pressed to find anywhere where boats come out the other end, where the, the material gets it, and what happens to it on the way. As, 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 as clever and welcome together as that factory. I think it's immensely uh, intelligent and uh, you know, it's a tribute to the guys that set it up. I mean, you've been in a few, few boat building sheds in your time. How does that sort of compare on the scale? <laughs> well, you know, if, if they go to one to ten, this one is up at about a hundred. Yeah. 
It really is. It's so far removed from, you know, boat building factories and boat building. I mean, even, the, you know, the things that churn out fiberglass in filthy places, mm. dust and dirt. And, and you, you know, immaculate boats, they think, come out the other end, but they could be so much better mm. if it was all like that. But then the tooling up there, well, the tooling is just wonderful. Mm. To be able to cut to the degree of accuracy that they're cut, mm. and, and, and shaping it, it is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. What do you um, think is going to happen with the scaling of this, what we've seen with the AC45 going up into 72? Well, you've got to think of the loads going up by a factor of five or six. But, you know, they're coping well with this, and I'm quite sure the engineers will get around that problem. And it's only an engineering problem. The sailing problems are going to be a bit more uh, full on, but yeah, I think it'll be wonderful. This happened far too late in life for me, unfortunately. <laughs> 45 years ago, one of these, you know, God, I've been so wonderful. Yeah. Reg and I would have had a ball. Absolutely. All right, thanks very much. All right, mate. Thank you. Bye.